Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, Ladies and gentlemen, the horror stories from the media about Ebola are never ending. In a Nigerian hospital, doctors and medical staff have even fled, supposedly for fear of being contaminated and contracting Ebola. Because of these reports, we continue our coverage of Ebola. Welcome to our today's media commentary. Should Ebola be declared a worldwide epidemic? First, we want to remind you briefly of the swine flu and the following well-known facts. In order to be able to declare the swine flu a pandemic, in May 2009, the World Health Organization specifically changed their definition of a pandemic level 6. The pandemic criterion, that there must be a high mortality rate, was simply, without hesitation, deleted. Also, it is interesting that the U.S. pharmaceutical manufacturer Baxter secured itself the patent of an H1N1 vaccine an entire year before the first case of the swine flu due to the virus H1N1 even occurred. The current procedure of the World Health Organization with the supposed Ebola epidemic and their proceedings with the swine flu are almost identical. According to the research of the renowned vaccination specialist Hans Totsin, one day before the World Health Organization announced the pandemic alert for Ebola, the U.S. Center for Disease Control, the CDC, changed their case definition for Ebola. That means that now, with a positive Ebola test, malaria and other diseases must not anymore be excluded as possible causes. And aside from this, as we already reported in related broadcasts, for some time now, the USA is in possession of a patent for an Ebola strain and secured itself the exclusive rights for the production of an Ebola vaccination. Now, what does this change mean in the case definition of Ebola in practical terms for Africa and for the whole world? Generally, in medicine, a disease will be described in terms of its symptoms. With Ebola, these are fever, pain in the limbs and diarrhea. However, it is a medical fact that, for example, a malaria infection, drinking dirty water, eating rotten things, as well as poisonings by pesticides or even vaccinations themselves, can lead to exactly the same symptoms as are attributed to an Ebola infection. Due to the change made by the CDC, a positive laboratory test on Ebola is now absolutely sufficient to define patients as exclusively ill with Ebola and to treat them exclusively with Ebola medications. Due to the unspecific testing methods for Ebola, it can also happen that verifiably absolutely healthy people generate a positive result in the Ebola test. Valued viewers, if this fixed new definition of Ebola from the CDC prevails, the numbers of supposed Ebola cases could suddenly rise dramatically, not only in West Africa, but worldwide, based solely on a supposed positive, inadequate laboratory test. It is worth it to watch the further development of the alleged Ebola pandemic and to question the reports by the mainstream media. Until next time, goodbye.